Welcome to Silk. This is a kind of open world game where you have to trade, fight, and of course survive along the Silk Road trade routes, which is an interesting game. Uh, it, it has a pretty simplistic control system, very old school, and of course very um, very reminiscent of games I've played in the past. So I was very pleased to get a copy of this game early before it's released. So I thought I'd share with you again. I explained earlier in an early video how the game plays to a degree, but the tutorial itself is just a text one, pretty easy, very minimal sound effects and voiceover. There's a little bit of explanation about each place and town, village, an encampment that you visit, obviously the historically um, famous ones like Antioch. Uh, yeah, it, it's a pretty cool game. If you like a chill out game, this is all game you could play. It's on pre-order offer at £7.19, which is pretty cheap, I admit. Eight ninety nine for the full price. It's got several things to do in it, apart from obviously travelling the Silk Road on an epic journey. You've got to encounter uh, all sorts of people, mainly not so nice ones. You'll also find little secret places as well, lots of uh, stuff you can find. I tend to go by the tactic of travelling by the rivers and the forests because that's where you can hunt at night and that takes the pressure off you finding and buying supplies so you will live longer doing it that way because obviously if you uh, don't buy supplies then your caravan will turn on you and your guards will leave and you'll uh, you'll be killed, you'll die so yeah, lots of tactics that you can actually use uh, to play this game is um, when you level up there are so many advisors that you can chop and change them of course and they'll unlock lots of choices in the world as well so that's pretty cool so you know every time you hire one of your four advisors you gotta think who's gonna be the best one and you know you will come across better ones you can always get rid of those old ones you can battle trade I prefer to trade and explore it's pretty cool you can am amass a huge huge caravan as well if you handle it right and you can build a huge army too so you can just basically take what you want and kind of explore the whole world and just be the boss of everything really and that's about it that's all the game entails it's obviously just the art of raiding uh, kingdoms you know if you decide to do the the warlord route so i'm doing like the traveler route in this game i'm gonna do the bit of the gameplay here you will come across several buildings some romanesque in appearance and others more like uh, outposts and villages and kind of you know mud huts and things like that it's all kind of um you know it's like a, a throw of dice really what will happen there's a lot of encounters with animals uh, you'll also find horses in the world and you can capture them as well again as i said before stick to the coast stick to the rivers and everything and you'll be fine and then approach encampments and you can either uh if you've got enough advisors if you've got all four advisors they'll give you some really good advice and really take note of what they say and they will help you survive longer if you have a good advisor don't have a good advisor you're not going to get very far in the game but you know there are a lot of things i'm not going to ruin it for you but there are a lot more things in this game that you'll find quite enjoyable as i did the trading i'm not really keen on the trading but i did get the hang of it near the end of my uh, three four hour playthrough of this game i tell you i only wanted to play about an hour or so because i thought oh, i'm not really digging it but then i got into it and it was a lot more fun. And I hope you find it fun too. Till then I'm going to shut up and I'll let you watch the rest of the gameplay. Give me a like and a subscribe. That will even be better for me. That really helps my channel. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the gameplay. See how I get on. I'll talk to you soon. Boroea enjoyed a certain degree of autonomy, despite being officially governed by a legate in Rome, and was growing swiftly on the back of Silk Road trade.
Just west of Antioch lay a lush park of woods and waters, with a temple to the oracular god Pythian Apollo, and a temple to the goddess Hecate underneath. The Romans had preferred Antioch as their eastern capital to Alexandria, which was inconveniently positioned. Despite frequent earthquakes, they had tried to make the great city into the Rome of the East.
I think long stretches of this game, there's too much silence. There could be more sound effects. It kind of kills the atmosphere a bit. I think if it had more wildlife sounds, it'd be great. Again, if it was spoken, if the text was spoken, it'd be even better. I think this game or animation. But you yeah, know, it is what it is. It's a text old school game. I know what they're going for. I know they're going for that feel. I understand. So I can let that go. I think the game itself is pretty decent to tell you the truth. But, you know, we're gonna try and trade spice jars for provisions. I've got one spice jar. <laughs> get a bit of food. I, I never run out of food. It's easy to get it, and it's easy to trade. You know, animals and sell them on at a better, you know, a better price elsewhere. But it's just getting there that's the trouble. You end up losing a lot of silver, so you got to survive. At these caravan SI, those little caravan sites, that's where you can hire staff, you know, merchants, soldiers, and you'll because I've got the full set there, all four. I don't need to hire anyone, but when you do hire them, you really have to take into account what they do. The more they can do, the more valuable they are. So yeah choices choices it's just don't pick the first one that comes like i did here that's a mistake i made just take your time make sure that uh, whoever you hire uh, is, is useful Thank <laughs> you. 